I'm going to replace this Minko de Fortric with a new outfit. Just having a jaw with some of the guys that work at this beautiful company called Colorton Airy. So thanks to Homo, what a luck, what a sport. <laughs> but that's exactly what today's show is about. It's going to be one of these uh, tech shows. I'm taking off the Fortrex and I'm replacing it with one of those beautiful brand new Mincota Ultrex from my buddy up at Falconelli Customs. Thanks, Justy. And uh, if you guys are looking to purchase a Fortrex, this one is for sale. If it hasn't been sold, when we drop this video first things first you know i've mentioned it before in one of my videos i think it was my lowlands 3d install video which i'll also link down below whenever i work on my boats i always like to put down like an old towel or something you know your tools get laying around they got grease and dirt on them you don't want that nonsense all over your fancy carpet so put down a towel i lay down the tools that i need i'm going to just do a quick review through the motor just check all the nuts and bolts and screws that i'm going to need um, I'm going to take the unit off today and then we're going to come back and we're going to install the Ultrex at a later stage. So uh, today it's just about taking the Fortrex off and replacing it with the Ultrex. So I'm going to kick it off with getting off all this tape, getting all my transducer wires taken off, um, all the accessories that are mounted onto this unit like the transducers for my low range HDX9s. I'm going to get all of that peripheral stuff off and then I'm going to start hitting the hardware with a foot pedal. I'm going to have to take this uh, mount that I have customized and made here. I'm going to have to take this off to get all the wires off. So it's time to strip out all those wires and uh, get this bad boy released from the Ranger. Everybody loves a good piece of insulation tape. Okay, so you see me removing like a lot of tape up here. What I like to do is um, all my wires I like to run underneath this insulation. So I, I use insulation tape and I tape the ends up, but this is like an electrical band stuff. I don't know what you would call it. They use it to keep cables neat and uh, it's fairly thick um, and I like to run my cables underneath there. I don't want to run up against some rocks or damage something or pull it up you know in the trolling motor nicks that transducer cable and you lose signal. So I like to keep it nice and uh, neat inside that conduit there and I cover that up and then I just seal the ends with that insulation tape that you saw me take off. So um, it protects the, the cables and uh, it looks a lot neater too so it's just something i've always done if you have a better option then message down low below in the comments write it down below if you have a better option for this but uh, that's just something that i like to do i'm a power tools guy so i'm gonna use my little hand drill to undo all these nuts and bolts all right guys so update so far um we've managed to get all the cables undone all the transducer cables are off um, the hydro wave cables are off everything's loose and free um, i've taken off my bracket for the transducer mounting now i'm going to get down into the foot pedal and for this job i don't use a drill i'm very delicate with those uh, threads on that foot pedal as well as you need that length you need that extra long length to get in there to get the foot pedal off so i'm going to loosen the foot pedal and then i'm basically going to have this whole four tracks loose um, except for the actual motor mount so that's still going to be fixed on there i'll then open up the panel and then i'll undo the electrical cables it's always easier to take something apart than it is to put it back together so one thing to remember always keep all those screws and nuts and bolts especially if the dude who's getting this motor must have all those nuts and bolts ready for him 
when it arrives with him, he doesn't have to go and scratch. Nothing worse than missing a few, a few, uh, a few screws, and you have to mission out, go get more, come back. Next up, I'm going to get this electrical panel open on the front of the Ranger, and just disconnect that power, and have it ready for the Ultrax. So one thing that I love best about Ranger boats is they make things so simple for you to, to change. I'm going to change this trolling motor normally I'd have to relink all those power cables from the batteries and everything. On this boat it's so simple, there's a box underneath here, you open it up, you take the two lugs, you swatch, swap them over and you're done. Check this out. It's pretty straightforward, you reach in here, you get this cable, open that up, change those out and you've got your next trolling motor on there. So there's one for any of the local boat builders that want to make things, you know, the unique little things that count. This is one of them. So simple and so easy. I'm just going to go to the back of the boat here quickly and I'm just going to make sure the power's off. Again, Ranger boats making things so simple. I can open up the hatch. I take a look here. I can see that it's on or off. In this case, it's off. So I know all my power is isolated to the front of that trolling motor. So simple. There it is. Trolling motor is disconnected. Not even a minute. Right, next up is quite simply, we've got to get those bolts off. And the Ranger, it's fairly simple. It's a big hollowed out section here. You can see the boat's foam filled. And I can get to all those bolts very, very easily. I can feel all six of them comfortably from the front here so I'm gonna get a number 11 or it's probably a metric or whatever they use in the States but 11 uh, is gonna work for me and the drill with the correct drill bit on the inside because I don't want to strip any of those I don't want to strip any of those nuts or those bolts or screws or whatever you want to call them I don't want to strip those, gonna get the right tools and gonna get this bad boy off, finally. Okay, so admittedly that uh, way with the drill pretty much sucked. I couldn't get in there and I'm worried about stripping something, so I'm going the old fashioned way. I got my ratchet, I'm gonna get up in there with a the ratchet. Four down, two to go. She's loose. So the Fortrex is off, and here it is, the Ultrex. So it's part two of the installation of the Ultrex. Now, we missed a bit of the unboxing because uh, I was too excited and uh, I unboxed that thing, but here's a few clips of the unbox that I did manage to capture. Okay, so here we are, about to unbox the Mincode's Ultrex. I'm still in my work clothes, so quickly gonna unbox it because I'm just too excited. Now we're back here. And uh, we're going to install the Ultrax on the Ranger. I've got it in the car. I'm going to unpack it and I'm just going to show you guys briefly what comes in the box. And then I'm going to try and explain the process that you've got to take to install this thing. So I have had a look already that um, the bracket of the Ultrax and the bracket of the Fortrax, the drilling holes or the mounting holes line up exactly the same. So I don't have to drill any more holes. So it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Um, but we got that little GPS puck and a few wires and cables we got to connect which is not normal so let's just get right to it. So if we take a look at what you get in the Ultrax box you get of course the motor, you get the foot pedal, you get the prop which goes on the end of the uh, motor gives you all your propulsion of course you get a heading sensor that heading sensor is going to allow you the GPS position as well as allow you to uh, use the jog function so if you're on a position and you want to jog five meters to the left you can just jog it five meters to the left on the foot pedal which is really cool you get your mounting screws which of course are very very important uh, you get these screws which I have no idea what they're for you get a bounce buster, it's what I call it, that mounts onto the underside of the motor and 
gives you a position on the boat, gives you some stability. Very important for places like Tiervaras Cliff with big waves. That's a must. I'm very glad that they started including these in the motors now as well. You get a strap. A strap of course goes on the bottom of the bracket. The bracket I've just put in position over here. As you can see very similar to the Fortrex. Um, you've got the lift assist spring here. Beautiful bracket. So that strap is going to go somewhere about here to hold that motor in position when it's in the stowed position. You obviously get the crossbar or the bolt for the lift assist which is one of the last things that I'm going to put on and then a remote control for if you want to control your positioning from the back of the boat and some manuals. Not sure whether I'm going to read those just because that's the type of guy that I am. I don't know what this is. Looks like a cable for that thing there. And then that's what you get. Okay, so there's a lot to do here. So I'm just going to get the grunt work all done, or the donkey vac. I'm going to start bolting this down. I'm going to fit the trolling mode. I'm going to do all the hard stuff, and then I'll get back to talking and doing all the technical stuff a little later. Okay, so this may be something really simple, but I just want to show you. The reason why people strip screws like this is because they use the wrong bit. Okay, you see how pointy that guy is there? It's going to go in, but it's not going to go all the way in. It's going to be a bit shallow. So I'm going to use this guy that's going to got a bit of an edge on it. It's going to grip a bit more. It's gone all the way in, and I feel like I'm going to get a better, better grip on that head, which is important. I don't want to strip it, then I can't get it off. So use it don't use it i think it's a number two or a number three or something i don't know the best part of working at this location is i get to chill with these two angels say hi hi say hi boy say hi Ow. hi <laughs> okay so she's on brackets bolted on i've checked that Nothing's uh, going to be sticking out the side of the boat. You're not going to be able to bump anything. I'm happy with the position. I've checked this over here. You know, it's sitting f far enough for the trolling motor to, to fall over or tilt over and nothing gets stuck. I just want to remind everybody, when tilting the motor, keep your fingers clear of all hinges, pivots, points and moving parts. You might get your fingers stuck. I want to get this guy out of here. This is your main Allen screw. That's where that head of that trolling motor, somewhere over here, is going to be bolted right there. Okay, so I figured it out the hard way. Motor must be in the stowed position in order to put the bolt on. So for the next part of the install, I'm going to put in the mount for the gas lift, for the lift assist. So you get these two tubes and you get the bolt and the screws. So basically what you want is you want that and then that and one of those on either side. And that gas lift is going to be mounted about there in the middle. Let's do it. I'll show you a little trick that I learned on YouTube. Actually, can't claim it because I didn't I didn't invent it. I'm gonna put a screwdriver in there. Well, first things first, I'm gonna put this on oh and then i'm going to put a screwdriver in there to hold it in place and then i'm going to push that all the way through and it should line up perfectly 
a little bit of Loctite in there. Okay, done. Okay, so here's a solid disclaimer. And I said in the beginning, I shouldn't need to read this manual, but there's so many different things and electrical connections, because now you're dealing with a GPS and an electrically, electrical steer system. You gotta plug things in, so. I'm gonna read it. power in we've got it mounted we've got everything connected I've checked the electrics I've checked that the foot pedal is parallel when the motors in line with the keel of the boat that was the whole thing that I read in the book um, I hope I'm not skipping a beat here but I'm gonna leave it at that I'm not gonna undo that and check all the tension I'm happy with the foot pedal tension so I'm happy as it is when it comes out the box so I'm not gonna fiddle with that I'm gonna see if I've got power here now Okay, so clearly I've missed a step somewhere because I haven't got any power on here and this is not turning. Okay, so I feel like a bit of a tool now. It was working, there was nothing that was missing. The Ultrexes have a safety mechanism that when it's in the stowed position, the prop won't spin. So when it's not in the stowed position, she spins. So one thing I kind of wasn't... Uh, mentally prepared for let's say was installing this gps puck or communicator so of course the trolling motor works on gps and position sensor which is this so i've got to run that power now the power is not the issue because on the ranger i've got uh, a fused panel just underneath that front panel there where i get all my power from so i can just connect that straight on all i'm going to do is take one of these guys plug it in and off we go but what i do need to do is i've downloaded an app called oh goodness jemico that's the app there and what this does is going to just uh, measure those magnetic fields around that trolling motor it's going to check areas you know it's going to help me define that area where that sensor is going to be best uh, to be to be positioned so i think i'm going to get it up there just next to that trolling motor as close as i can if it is gps i want it to be as close to the head of that trolling motor as possible um but yeah i'm going to use i'm going to use that app to get me the best position possible okay so one of the things they don't explain to you or not that i've seen on any of the youtube videos is that you actually have to set the tension on the foot pedal on the Ultrax. So much like the Fortrex, you had that screw under the foot pedal that would set the tension. It's the same thing, except because it's an electric steer, you have to disengage that electric steer over here. You have to disengage that, loosen the cable, set the gear, put it back in, and then connect it all up again and then tighten the foot gear pedal so yeah just read the manual so disengage that steering control this has got to be loosened when i loosen the foot pedal screw this is going to become loose i'm going to lift this up i'm going to put that foot pedal level and then i'm going to re-engage it again so i'm basically disconnecting the gears and then reconnecting the gears Okay, so what that has allowed me to do is get a perfectly level foot pedal and now I can go back and I can put that all together. So all this does is just a gear that keeps your tension here. You loosen the tension, you take the gears off, you get that foot pedal level, you put it back on and then everything should be perfect. Okay, that covers back on. Now all I gotta do is connect this.
that's connected We've got all the peripherals on there all the cables for the transducers and everything ran them all down there I've run them with uh, just some insulation tape because I want to see what I'm going to do with this little part here and what the best pathway for me to run these cables is so I'm leaving it temporary for now I'm going to fish with it and see um, all I'm doing now is I'm actually going to try and mount the heading sensor on here I prefer to drill a hole in here than I do on here so yeah I've drilled the hole I've set it there another quick tip if you're looking for a great drill bit for fiberglass these are the ones to go for I call it a step down drill bit but uh, it really makes a good clean neat hole it also gives it like a little beveled edge a nice neat clean edge and it doesn't it stops the the, the fiberglass from chipping so although I'm not drilling into the fiberglass it's still a good uh, good tip there So here it is, it's the moment of truth. The Ultrax is on. I've come out here to a dam I haven't fished in about two and a half years. I'm just gonna fiddle with the Ultrax, test it out, make sure that the link is connected, the GPS works, fiddle it. But let's see if I can actually install a trolling motor properly. Just went up in the middle of nowhere, hit that anchor button, utilizing that spot lock feature. The motor does all the work for you. You can focus on fishing. And that's the important part. That's the exact reason why I decided to upgrade to this motor for that exact feature. I must say it's a little bit different to get used to the electrical steer rather than, than the four track steering. So far, so good. I also just want to give a shout out to Justy Fark officer of Farkinelli Customs for hooking me up with this trolling motor. He did me an absolutely fantastic deal. And if you want to get one of those fantastic deals, just use the promo code JUSTFISHING. Call up Justy and negotiate your deal. He'll give you a special price on a brand new Mincota Ultrax to suit your bass boat. And if you're stuck and you're not as technical as I am, or think you're not as technical as I am, because I'm not technical, you can give uh, Tyrone Mortimer uh, a call at Rock Your Boat up in Johannesburg. You guys up top there are so sorted with whatever you need. It's a little bit different down here in the Cape, but get hold of him. He'll do the install, he'll do the service, he'll treat your boat like it's his own, and uh, he's always also always willing to help. So thanks, Justy of Farconelli Customs, and thanks to Tyrone of Rock Your Boat. I'll leave all the links down below. Click on the links. There's a little word that says description. Click down there, links, yeah. Oh, 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 oh,